Hey folks, Professor K here. So today we're going to be talking about text alignment and justification in InDesign and really improving your typography on a long form scale. So in this video, we're going to focus mostly on left aligned text and some of the things that happen around left aligned text, such as ragging and widows and orphans. In the next video, we'll focus specifically on justified text. And I'll explain what both of those are along the way. But first, let's take a look at what a good rag is as well as what widows and orphans are and how we can fix those in InDesign. All right, so here I have a sample file here and you can download this from the link. But basically what I've done is I have this magazine template and I've put in my title, my subtitle, and then body copy in here. And what I wanna do is I want to improve the readability of this. Right now we're using Lorem Ipsum in order to really focus on the typography. But in your projects or in real work, you would be using real content here. So some of the techniques that we're not going to cover today, but that would also be an option here, are things like rewriting the sentence or deleting certain words. However, because this is lorem ipsum, we're not going to cover that. We're going to focus on what can you do if you can't edit the copy. So here I'd like you to notice that we just have several paragraphs. And when we click on this, we're going to see in the properties panel our paragraph styles. And here we have basic paragraph and we can notice that it is aligned left. Now, if you don't see this view with the black in the background, one thing you can do is hit the W key on your keyboard to switch between these two views. So just to demonstrate that one more time, W key to preview, W key to show everything, including your grid and guidelines. So when we have great typography, we want things to be really easy to read. And one of the things that makes typography or a body of copy really easy to read is the line length, like we've talked about before, but also are the lines ending at roughly the same amount? This is called the rag. Whenever you left align or right align a certain set of text, what will happen is Based on what the words are and when they end, you'll get this sort of space at the end of each line. So here, I just want you to like kind of take your glasses off for a moment if you're lucky enough to have them or defocus your eyes a little bit and just look at the screen and notice where you see this white space happening, kind of like draw a line between this left edge of the paragraph here and this around here. It's relatively the same and relatively even. In fact, if we look over here to the right, this is almost all even. That's called a good rag. You don't need it to be perfectly even with left aligned text, but you do want it to be somewhat even. Now let's see if we can show what a bad rag looks like. Let's try and decrease this and let's make this really small. Okay, so here we go. This is getting a little bit more distracting. So notice how over here, if we look, there's a lot of jumpiness, especially around here. This is like a big, almost it's almost like pointy, right? It's pointy space. So bad rags will have pointy space. They'll have lots of weird spacing issues. In fact, if we were to turn off hyphenation in here, we'd be able to see that even more clearly. So let's try that. Let's go to Window and type in Tables, and then we're going to go to the Paragraph panel. And to turn off hyphenation right here in the Paragraph panel, you're just going to go to the bottom and deselect this hyphenate. And now we can see that we're getting some weird spacing and it'll be even more apparent as we go further down that the rag won't be as good. See how jumpy it gets over here? See how like bouncy these words are? In reality, InDesign does a pretty good job of balancing your rag well as long as you have the right type size. So one thing that you could do to help with this is to choose a good type size from the beginning. In our assignment right now, we already have 11 point font selected and I don't want you to change that. So we're going to look at some other options for adjusting the rag in here. One is called discretionary hyphens. See how InDesign is hyphenating automatically some of these words? For example, let's, let's just highlight this somehow. Let's change the color of this word here so that it's really clear what word we're looking at and how it's changing. So I'm gonna change it to red. And now when I decrease the size, 
See how that hyphen disappeared? InDesign took care of that. Now, if you manually hyphenate something, and I'm just going to put this word here in green, and it doesn't really matter what the word is. I just want you to be able to see. Actually, I'm going to put it in blue. So here, focus on Quate right here, and we are going to change it to blue so you can see. The problem with this method of adjusting your hyphenation is that when you go to resize, InDesign is going to try and keep that hard hyphen and that hard line break in there. So this is not the way you want to do it. This is not the way that you want to fix these things. You want to add what's called a discretionary hyphen. Discretionary hyphens tell InDesign where you would prefer a word to break if it thinks the line needs to be broken. So InDesign's making a lot of judgments about what a good rag is, and that's why it's pretty good at um, predicting, you know, making text look good. But if you want a little bit more control of that, you use a discretionary hyphen to do that. And the keyboard shortcut for that is Shift, Command, and then hyphen. And as you can see now, with the UL, Paru, and Enter, let's go ahead and just highlight this word. And again, we're going to put it in a nice blue color so we can watch what happens when we resize it. We're going to resize. And notice now that InDesign's not trying to do that. It's only trying to break it in that spot when the line needs to be broken. So if you want more control over your rag, the number one keyboard shortcut that you're going to use every single time, anytime you want to say where that hyphen shows up, is Shift, Command, Hyphen. And it's not always going to put a hyphen in there. Notice how in this word, it didn't put a hyphen in. I'm going to outline in this, a third, this in a third color, and this time I'll do green. So let's resize this and see if we can get this to hyphenate. Really doesn't want to, huh? Have I mentioned that hyphenation is really finicky? There we go. Aha. Okay, so now it's hyphening. But notice that all those other places in design said, for the best readability of this text, I'm not going to break that line at that place. So keep that in mind. When you put in discretionary hyphens, it is completely normal for it to not show up when you first put it in. You might not see it. All you're doing is saying, hey, InDesign, I would prefer that you break the word this way. Shift, Command, hyphen. Doesn't break. Now over here with cones, let's try it here. Let's see if InDesign will let me. Shift, Command, hyphen. Not going to work. Overall, this is pretty well set, and there's not too much going on here in terms of bad rag. So InDesign doesn't want to fix it for you, and that's OK. So that's discretionary hyphens. Next, we're going to take a look at widows and orphans and how it can affect the readability of your text, as well as how you can fix them. I'll see you in just a moment.